and welcome to Beads Jar. My name is Billy, and in today's tutorial, which is more for the advanced level, I'll be showing you how you can create this beautiful Tiller and Baby Spike necklace using a vari variety of Mayuki beads. I hope you enjoy the project. For this rather intricate but incredible pattern, we're going to be using quite a variation of beads. So one of my personal favourites is the beautiful two-hold Mayuki Tilla beads and this one's in the metallic gold iris. We've got the Jet Californian Gold Rush in the beautiful O beads. A Mayuki matte black drop bead. A size 11 Mayuki matte olive a size 8 in the Mayuki rounds and a size 15 in a metallic uh, green, olive green this one. I'll be using the Magic Apple spike beads which are 5 by 8 millimeter. I've got the Beadsmith Eslon cord and we also have some hematite uh, six millimeters for finishing off our fastener. I'll be working mainly on the eight pound fire line, but finishing the project with the Eslon. So this is just for the actual weave part of our pattern. And I've threaded that onto a 12 millimeter beading needle. And for the moment, I'm working with a meter and a half of the uh, fire line just so we don't get too tangled up. We will be adding more of the thread at a later point, but I'll show you exactly how to do that as we're going through the project. The only other item I'll be working with as well is my precision scissors. Okay. I'm gonna start the project with one of the hematite beads and I'm gonna put that onto my beading needle and go all the way to the bottom of the thread, leaving a 10 millimeter uh, sorry, 10 centimeter uh, tail that I'll be working with as well. So I'm just going to go up through the hematite bead and pull my thread through. This will be coming off. This is just to help us at the start of this project. I'm going to be following my hematite bead with one of the size 11 Mayukis and a tiller and then another Mayuki. We're gonna do 21 tiller beads in total with a seed bead in between each. So I've threaded all my tiller beads with a seed bead in between each and this will give me the opportunity to check one, I have the 21 that I would require and that I've not gone wrong and added a seed bead in any parts here as well. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen and twenty-one. So that's all the tillers that I'm going to need for my length on this particular part. I'm then going to follow by putting six of the size 11 map beads onto the end. So we're going to do six of those. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then an O bead. In fact, three O beads. So we're picking up a different bead at this moment now. So I'm going to pick 
three O beads and thread them onto my needle. So we've got the three and down to the seed beads. We're going to do three of the eights. Another three O beads. Three of the eights. And then four O beads. So we've still got our tillers as we had them before and we've now got our little row of O beads and a larger size 8. The last O bead I added I'm just going to move up the cord and I'm going to go back down and I'm going to go through the O beads, the 8s and out of the first of my seed beads here. Let's move some of this out of the way so you can get a clearer look of what I'm doing. So the last O bead we're not going to go back through and we're taking our thread all the way down through those and out of the seed bead at the bottom. Always check that you've gone all the way through those beads. So we've got one O bead which is sat differently to all the rest at the top here. We've come out of the first C bead in that row and I'm going to add another five before going into my tiller bead. So I'm picking the matte olives up in the size 11 and I want five of those for my thread. And we're going to go through the tiller bead. In between the rest of the tiller beads from now on, I'm only going to be using the size 8 in the metallic. So I'm just going to pop one of those in between each of the tiller beads. So we're going through the hole in the tiller beads that's free. So obviously not the top row where we've been adding in between the size 11s. Okay, and you're gonna do these size eights in between each of the tillers until we get to this to end here. So I've come along and done 
all of my size eights in between the tillers. So I'm on the very last one. And I'm gonna go up through this one. So we've created our row here and our necklace is taking the first form for the bottom, for the bottom there. And now we're going to be adding our next section on as well. So in order to create my little spikes, so I've gone all the way around, I'm going to take my thread across that tiller bead and down. So I've just gone across the right angle there and down. And I'm taking that down and I'm going through the seed bead on this side. Just to make this easier to follow, I'm now going to flip the project over because I'm right-handed and I need to work from this side. So you can see that my thread's now coming out of the size 8 seed bead on this side. I'm going to pick up one of my tiny size 15s in the seed bead, followed by an O bead, another 15, so we've got 15, O bead, 15, a size 8, another 15, and we're going to pick up one of the Mayuki drop beads. Following my Mayuki drop bead, we're going for another of the 15s, a matte olive, a 15, an O bead, and a baby spike. Move this up so you can see. Follow the baby spike with an O bead and then we're going to repeat the last three before the Mayuki drop. So that's a 15, a mat 11 and another 15. Okay. I'll just run through that quickly. So I came out of my eight, picked up a 15, a no, a 15, an eight, a 15, a Mayuki drop. Then we did a 15, an 11, 15, oval, baby spike, oval, O bead, sorry, 15, 11, 15. So I'm going to take that thread back up to the seed beads at the top and we're going to go without going through the baby spike and the one next to it, we're just going to go back up once through the Mayuki drop. So we're only going back up through the Mayuki drop on this section. And when I pull this thread we'll get the baby spike to sit downwards in our design pattern. Like so. We're going to take this thread up to the next size 8 on this side of the tiller bead and I'm going to repeat the pattern on this side. So it was a 15, an 8, 15, an O bead, and a 15. So 15, 8, 15, O bead, 15, and through 
your next seed bead there. And that's going to give you your little spike drop. I'm going through the tiller hole on the bottom and coming out. No, I'm not. I'm coming down, sorry, to make my next drop. So we're picking up again. So I'm picking up a, a size 15 and following the same way that I created this spike along. And I'm going to keep moving those all the way along. So I'm going to do another one to show you and then you'll just continue doing those until you've reached this side where I'll then explain how we're going to move on to create our top and finally finish those off. So I'll do one more just to show you. So keep going and creating your drops all the way along until the end and then I'll join you on how to create the other side as well. So I left you finishing off your fabulous spikes and drops from the tiller beads. So I've got all the way to the other end of the 21 tiller beads. I'm at the moment coming out of one of my size 8 uh, toho beads and I'm going to come up through the same hole, same side of the tiller. So I'm coming up out of there and I'm going to take this thread across the top of this tiller bead and straight down and then I'm going to go all the way around that top row. So I'm coming all the way through this top row to get to the other side here. Just take your time, you want to make sure you don't miss any beads whilst you're doing this one. So I've reached the top there, there's one seed bead next to my spacer <clears throat> that I'm also going to go through. I'm just going to pull that spacer bead up and away now. So that was the tail end that we started with and we've got our seed bead. So I'm just going to go up through that seed bead and I'm going to add another four, sorry another five seed beads above this one just checking the quantity that I've got on that side so we're the same so we've got five seed beads to go on and that's in the size 11 one two three four and five <clears throat> so we're repeating this exact same pro process so the exact same stringing method that we used on this side so we're going to go for the three O beads next, three of the eights, Toho's, three O's, three Toho's, and then we're going for the four So 
So as you can see, we've got the same pattern repeating here. We've got the four O beads and the fourth one at the top is the one we flip onto its side. So we go down our thread. So just remember that's your tail end. And then we don't go through the last O bead there, but we go back through and down all the others until you've come out of the first of the size 11s on that row. And then we're gonna pull that nice and tight. Giving us the matching as that end. And <clears throat> adding five of the C beads onto this side, five. Back through the tiller and the first of the Toho beads, pulling that in. So I don't need this end, so I'm going to take this away now. In order to do that, we want to tie it off with knots, so I'm taking the needle under the thread that's running through the tiller and the Toho, so between them, and you'll see that starts to create a loop here with my fire line. I'm going to go through the loop and then pull that in nice and tight. So creating my knot, knot between my Toho and Tiller and then go back through and I'm going to do another knot on this side for extra security as well. So under the thread with the beading needle, through the loop and pull that tight. And then if you go back through the f a few beads, that'll one hide your knot and just give you a much neater finish. So I'm just going through the few beads next to it. My thread's now coming out next to the Toho and I'm gonna use the precision scissors to cut away that excess thread because we no longer need it. So I'm taking that off. And now we just need to finish this tail end before moving on to the actual chain part of the necklace here. So to take your stopper bead off, it should, if you just support the underneath, pull straight off the end. And we're gonna pop our beading needle back on the tail end and we're gonna knot it just as we did the, this part here. So I've put the beading needle on. I'm coming out of that bead. I'm gonna take that up and through some of my seeds here. You can create these knots wherever, so I'm gonna go between these two because then I can hide it in uh, alongside the two uh, seed beads. So I'm under my thread, create my loop, through the loop and tie my knot. back up through the seed bead and I'm going to come out in between the O's and the Toho with my needle around the thread through my loop and pull that tight Do one more. So around through the loop and pull that nice and tight. And cut away the thread. Okay, so now you can see we've got both of our ends done there and the beautiful, fabulous pattern here with the spikes and tillers. And we're gonna add our S long cord to the top of the necklace. Now I've pre-cut two separate 60 centimeter lengths here. 
and it's really easy. You're just going to take the cord through one of your O-beads, both ends together so that, that sits in the middle and we're going to tie a knot. So bring both around the finger, so both threads and straight back through your loop. So just slide that off your finger, go through the loop with both ends and we're pulling that nice and tight next to the O-bead like so. And then we're going to add one of the hematite copper finished beads. So both ends through and down to the bottom. And we're going to do another knot above this one. So loop over your finger, take that off the finger and through the middle of your loop. Go all the way along your cord and we're going to add another of the hematite beads. So both through. It's easier to tie the knot above this one first. So you're going to take your knot and just tie that as close to the end as you can. The bead goes back up to the knot and then you're going to tie another knot, this time against the bead and the knot. So I've made my loop and I'm just going to keep working that up with my fingers to that bead. We don't want a bit of space between the bead and the knot. So the knot's nice and close and I'm pulling that tight. Repeat that on the opposite side, so the same process again. Right, so we've got our two ends and we're going to add the very last part of this wonderful design which is a small section of macrame between these two beads in order to create a sliding knot so you can get it on and over your head. So you're just going to take another 30 centimeter length of your eslon. So I've just cut another 30 and running the two beads parallel to each other so we've got all our four cords and you're going to loop the new 30 centimeter around the middle somewhere and tie a knot now when i say tie a knot you do not need to go mad 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 pulling really tight because it will need to slide along the two cords so i've just tied a, a, a knot there and i'm just going to move this onto its side so you can see the next part of the macrame weave so I'm going to take one section over the top. So I've created a D coming from this side and that's running over the top of the threads. I'm now going to create a C shape that comes over the tail of the D and then up and under and through the D part that we had. So you're kind of doing a figure of eight. that and then you work from the opposite side so now I'm going to do a C and that's come over the top of the cords and you're taking the D and that's going over the tail but then under and through the C side of the weave so you'll see that macrame weave starting to grow so you're always changing the side so opposite side and then the other side. So over, then under and through. And then from this side, so over, under and through.
and I'm just going to continue until I've reached the end of these tails. So I'm starting to get a little bit close to the end of my 30 centimeters and I'm happy with the length that I've created there. So I'm just going to tie that off to do that, just a straightforward basic knot. Primer section is finished and I'm going to secure that knot with a tiny bit of glue so just to make sure that it doesn't slide out but do be careful you don't want to go mad with your glue it just has to go onto the knotted section if it goes onto your actual cords obviously it'll stop the whole process because we're wanting them to be able to slide so you can make this necklace longer or shorter so just be aware of that fact when you're using the glue. So I'll get my cords so you can see what I'm doing correctly. So we've got the two running at the bottom. These are the two coming off my knot and I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue onto this knot. And then I'll trim the ends away. So it's just on the actual knot part of my macrame. Just the glue into it. And then take away those excess threads. And check that that hasn't stuck to my other cords, which it hasn't. And there you have your sliding knots with a section of macrame, so you can make the necklace longer or shorter as you wish to wear it. So that'll slide and move along. Thank you for watching our project today give us a big thumbs up and subscribe now to our youtube channel you can see all the fabulous beads we have to offer at beadsjar.co.uk until next time bye bye